Oh. One second, everybody. It looks like, first of all, check, check me real quick to make sure the audio is good, because I think there is an issue right now. Let me make sure. Let me see. There's always something. Scarlet. It's always one of those things where you have to make sure it's correct. Okay, that should be good. Sorry, we're in a yet again another new place here in Puerto Rico. I'm just trying to set everything up. First of all, is the audio okay? Let me make sure in the comments section and kind of go from there. The green screen is back. Yes, exactly. So let's see. Da, da, da. And we're good. We're good. Great. Anyhow, sorry about that. So everybody, welcome to the Saturday live stream. So today we're taking a look at just some some factors that are contributing to what's going on in the market, uh, which we already know that uh, the things that are actually happening. But we want to take a look at there's just one thing to fear, and that really is fear itself. And we're going to take a look at um, a metric which we haven't seen since the FTX collapse, which has already been activated as of uh, today. So first things first, I always like this website. I, I, I like to look at this one better than CoinGecko right now because I like to see where things are going as far as like from all time highs. Cause I mean, we can talk about the prices and that's great, but I, I wanna see who's actually in profit or still in profit. And this is the site that I like to use. It's called uh, coingolive.com. I think there's a link in the description. If not, I'll, I'll add it in later. But Bitcoin from its all time high, I know it's been, some people say, well, oh, it's been brutal. This isn't anything. Look. 5%, 10% drop in a week. If you're in TradFi, that's awful. Uh, you know, here we call that a Saturday, not a big deal. But 23% from its all time high. ETH is doing even worse, 38%. BNB, 28%. Uh, Solana, almost 50% down. It's just uh, crazy. It's just how it is. Uh, XRP is even worse, 87%. And uh, so far, the best performing one, I think in the top 100, is TonCoin. And it's only 9% away from its all time high. So, uh, we did a, a deep dive on that. You can find that uh, doing a quick search of digital asset news, TonCoin, and why I actually have been uh, dollar cost averaging it every day. Anyhow, we see a lot across the board. So pay attention to the ones that are actually holding their value from their all-time high and which ones are massively, massively underperforming. Sweet Mary and Joseph, look at ICP is down 99% from its all-time high and it's still in the 29th spot. I don't understand how that works. Anyhow, that's what we have right there. Let's break into why we're all here, which is what's going on in the market. Now, when I go through these things and I, when we start to talk about different aspects of, of what could be happening, I want to remind you and, and so I want you to think about the opportunities that are available and the risks that are involved and are emerging behind the scenes. So it's, it's never just a 100% positive number go up, and it's never a 100% the world's gonna end. So just pay attention to things that we're talking about here and see where your strategy actually fits in. So there was an article today, Bitcoin Telegraph talks about how Bitcoin miners are near capitulation as profits dry up. And as a reminder, I mean, we just had a, a halving on uh, around April 19th, April 20th or so. And of course, when that happens, the Bitcoin miners, they're doing the same amount of work, the same amount of overhead, but they're getting paid half. Now, it's not just about the rewards in Bitcoin. It's also the transaction fee that they're actually able to process. I think it's a really good thing what they're doing with ordinals. I know some people absolutely hate it, but I think it's going to allow Bitcoin miners to be profitable moving forward. But we can see this is actually in crypto quant. I don't think it's a, when you look at this, you're like, is it that big of a deal? It's going to be. And miners are going to capitulate. They're going to shut off their rigs. And what's going to happen is the hash rate is going to drop and the difficulty level is going to adjust. But during that time, you're going to have a lot of Bitcoin miners who are selling. We all knew this was going to happen at some point. And here we are. So there was a comparison between the market bottom after FTX and the current drawdown after the halving. And right now, as of today, we're at roughly at the same amount that we did from FTX. And this was, again, the, uh, the hash rate drawdown. So what that means, and we can see it right here. I like this, this look a little bit better. I like this a lot, actually. 
And you can go to look into Bitcoin.com. It's a 100% free website. I love the website. Great stuff. And we can see that uh, there's quite a drawdown. And we topped out oh, around May 25th when Bitcoin is almost 70,000. That's when all the miners were up and running. And this was the all-time high for the hash rate. And what's happened? I mean, if we really take a look, it doesn't look that awful. But apparently, you know, 7% drawdown is something. Now, remember, when we're taking a look at this, the hash rate, that is the computational power of all the Bitcoin miners that are in the network. But you have to understand that as the hash rate goes up, the difficulty also goes up because there's only so many kind of rewards that can go around for uh, the mining of Bitcoin itself. And that's where the Bitcoin mining difficulty comes in. And if we can take a look at that, we can see that it adjusts. It adjusts actually, I believe every two weeks, correct me in the comments section. But when we see that the hash rate goes down, this is what this is a, a living, breathing organism, in my opinion. And once it goes, once the hash rate goes down, then the difficulty level adjusts. So if you want to be a winner in Bitcoin mining, all you got to do is just stick around. It's just like investing. If you can stick around and stay with it and you actually have the capital to keep going in, you're going to be successful. The thing is, is how many can actually do it? But I can tell you right now, as the difficulty levels go down, and the Bitcoin miners will start to come in and they will be a little bit more profitable or maybe the other ones will, will capitulate and there won't be so much sell pressure. So that's the first part. And then also there's another, another metric I like to take a look at. It's called the Puel multiple. This is about Bitcoin and, and the revenue that they actually produce. Puel multiple is calculated by dividing daily issuance of Bitcoin by the 365 day moving average. And all it really means is this. I, when it's in the red, it means there, you know, there's a lot of valuation, uh, a lot of uh, excessive. And when it's in the green, this is when you know, there's not as much uh, uh, returns. So all it means is like this. When you get a lot of people selling, you go in this red zone and maybe it's an idea to start to get out. And then when you get in the green zone, you're like, oh, this could be actually a, a pretty good time to actually buy. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, we are far, far away from an overheated category. So those are just two things to look at. And then, of course, we talked about uh, the Mt. Gox distribution. And this is going on actively. And I honestly, I knew it would happen. I just didn't know it was actually going to happen at this point. But uh, here we are. And uh, Mt. Gox, is, like we talked about yesterday, is distributing uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash. And the question was, was like, well, who cares? Because it's $8.2 billion worth of, worth of Bitcoin. And uh, it's currently been distributed only 0.08%. And the pending distribution is 99.9%. .9%. So why do we care about this? Because $8 billion to a market cap of $1 trillion plus for Bitcoin, who cares? It comes out of this. And this is where the market gets kind of funny. It's just really all about how you see it and how some people see opportunity and some people see excessive risk and some people get fearful. And it's the multiplier effect, as I call it. And when we take a look at this, it's just negativity yields more negativity. Positivity yields more positivity. And we see that when we are in these bear and bull markets. When you're in a massive bear market, you're like, it'll never get, it'll never turn around. And that's what most people do. And they think, oh, it'll never happen. And then, of course, it does, like it, always, like it always happens. Bull market, same type of thing. So I just took a look at it and go, this is how I see it. It's a multiplier effect. When you have 8 billion potential selling, and I'm not saying they're all going to sell. I've said this very clearly. They will sell. But depending on how much, we'll see. But it comes out of this. When you have this herd mentality, understanding that, hey, they're going to sell, then they, then they sell. And people get fearful because the market's irrational. Then if you have thin order books across different, uh, different exchanges, that is also an issue. Then you have the bots who pick up on this because remember, a lot of this stuff isn't like just you or me sitting down, just trading on our you know, pro Coinbase account. But this is bot trading and it's arbitrage and it's slippage and it's stop loss orders. And it's, it's happening automatically.
So when some people start to start to sell, then it's like a cascade effect. People who are on leverage, they get massive cascading liquidations because they're, they're on leverage and margin trading. And it just keeps falling and falling and falling. And that's kind of like what happens. So when you see like things go down, you're like, oh, it's because there's it's there's something wrong with utility or there's something that's that's really awful in, in the fundamentals of Bitcoin. It's not it's really never usually never that. It's just the irrationality of the market. So if you can stick around, you're going to do fine. The problem is that most people can't, and that's okay, because the ones that can, they clean up, and they're rewarded in the long haul. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section, but I would like to quickly go over some of the different uh, indicators, selling and buying indicators that I'd like to take a look at about what is going on, because maybe it's something I missed. Maybe it's you know not just fear. Maybe it's not just irrationality. Maybe it's not just the bots and leverage trading the market. Well, we'll see. So again, let's take a look at looking at Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the NUPL, net unrealized profit and loss. This is derived from market and realized value. Market value is the current price of Bitcoin, multiply the number of coins in circulation, 19 and a half million or so. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved. By subtracting realized value from market value, we get the unrealized profit and losses. And in all honesty, we're actually quite high. I mean, let me blow this up for you. Just remember that a year ago, I think we were around 25,000. Correct me in the comment section. And now we're actually, honestly, I don't even know where we're at today. Let me see. Uh, wow, 56,000, maybe 57, I don't know. So is that awful? Well, you can see we've dipped in this tiny, tiny capitulation sector, and that's what everybody's talking about. It's amazing how like the most fearful part of the market gets the most volume. It's like the biggest trolls in my account are the loudest people, I, just how it goes. And then we take a look at the Pi Cycle Top, which I'm still a big believer in. And we can see that in actuality, it's, uh, now this is, of course, one of the big indicators for selling. It's a, it's a retrospectively looking uh, chart, which was uh, created by Philip Swift. This is in 2019. Yeah, April 2019. There it is. And uh, retrospectively, it did a pretty good job in 2017, 14, and 13, or 13, two 13s. But also did a really good job in the last bull market. And I called it April 6, 21, which is pretty close. But once the 350-day moving average times two across the 111-day moving average, it's a good indicator of like the top. And we can see over here that you're like, well, where is it? It's pretty damn close, quite honestly. I'm not saying this is the top, but I'm just saying that I don't think this is like the worst thing of all time. And then we take a look at the MVRBZ score, which is market value versus realized value. The Z score takes up the noise. We can see that we're not in this green capitulation sector where we should sorry, like, you know, back up the truck or it's not overheated over here. It's pretty good. And then last two ones I'll, I'll mention is the historic risk levels. Crazy enough, it's like right in the middle for the risk levels. This is the time where I'm still accumulating, still buy Bitcoin every day. Now I'm buying ton coins, some others. But the big thing is this, the one, the one indicator that, that st stuck out to me was fear. And that's why I put this is there's nothing to fear but fear itself. There was no double spend. Putin didn't come out and he wasn't, didn't say, I'm the creator of Bitcoin or wasn't the NSA. There wasn't a, you know, a DDoS attack against Bitcoin and didn't fall about. It's just fear. And we can see that we are one point away from extreme, extreme fear. One point. The fear and grid X is 26, 25 becomes extreme fear. And the last time we were this low, it's funny enough, It was back in January 2023. Man, that's a long time ago. And we saw a lot of different problems over there. I mean, we had just come out. Actually, we had just come out of the all-time lows. November, December 2022, that was the all-time lows. And people were really uh, scared. So the last time that we saw this was January 2023. And I'm like, I think to myself, I'm like, do people get that fearful that fast? I guess we do have some new people in here, but who knows? Anyhow, that's what we have right now. Again, 
not too much to fear, but fear itself. But there are risks out there, and that's where, of course, you have to do your due diligence and move from there. And that's it for, for that piece. And before we go to the q and I just want to uh, tell everybody, we had a good run with some meme coins, but now it's time to buckle down. I put this, this, this tweet out yesterday, and I said, hey, it's time to face reality and move on from meme coins. I know some people say, well, meme coins are awesome. I'm not saying that you can't invest into them. I'm just saying, like, on my channel, I'm not going to keep talking about them because it is gambling, right? And if you've been here for a while, you know that I believe in the half and half method. So uh, there's a link in the description where I talk about it where, hey, it actually worked out pretty well for meme coins. For the majority, not all of them. But once it doubles, you know, you sell half. Then you wait for it to double again and you sell half. And then you're playing with house money, all that stuff. But uh, I just said, hey, it's time to move on. We really got to grow up. And uh, if a meme coin has utility, fantastic. That's great. We'll talk about it. But we really want to talk about things that are actually going to move us forward into the next, the next phase. And I don't think meme coins is really it. Now, I know people will say, well, it's got a great community, everything else. That's great. It's fine. You know, just on this channel, I'm probably not going to do too much on it. If you uh, are, need to get your fix <laughs> for meme coins, follow my friend Crypto Moses. And Crypto Moses, he's got some, some pretty good videos that are rational. And they explain about, you know, the best coins to mine and uh, the mentality of the investor. And it's another way to look at things. But he also talks about the next Pepe and stuff like that. <laughs> so that's my man, Crypto Moses. I'm going to put him in the, uh, there's a link in the description. I got to add that in right now. Actually, I'm going to put it in the chats. Follow him and go from there. But that's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for the news portion about what's going on.